First in the Tank is an apparel company with inclusivity in mind. Hello, Sharks. My name is Philomena Kane, and I am from the Boogie Down Bronx, New York, and I am here seeking $200,000 in exchange for 10% equity in my company, Kin Apparel. Sharks, by a raise of hands, how many of you own a hoodie? Lots. Okay, <laughs> now how many of you own a hair care product? All right, I am here to tell you that you can have both in one with Kin Apparel. Ah, uh, oh yeah. At Kin Apparel, we are revolutionizing hair care with fashion and inclusion with our satin lined hoodies. <laughs> you see, sharks, traditional hoodies are made with cotton, a material that absorbs the moisture in your hair, leaving it dry, frizzy, and prone to breakage. Consider the girl with big, beautiful curls who can't find a hood big enough to fit her hair. Or the guy with locks trying to stop limp balls from forming on his hair. <laughs> At Kin Apparel, we line our hoods with the finest quality satin, a soft and smooth material that by nature helps retain moisture and reduce friction. That coupled with our large hoods to fit all hair sizes means more protection, no frizz, and all around comfort. So sharks, who's ready to keep it naturally with Kin Apparel? Good job. Thank you. Great sharks, enthusiasm. Sharks, you have our most popular hoodies right there. Those are our thick hoodies. Oh. And you also have our innovative reversible satin pillowcases. So Philomena, what made you think of putting satin into a hoodie? In 2013, I got a full ride to Princeton University, wow. and that's where I did my undergrad. Good for you. And I was very stressed. Like, it was really hard on me. My hair was falling out. Oh. Yeah, my hair was falling out because I was stressed. And also, I come from a family of hairstylists. So when I was home in the Bronx, they will always take care of my hair. So when <laughs> I went over to Princeton, it cost like $100 to get my hair done. <laughs> I didn't have that money. So I was like, you know what? Let me chop it off. I so, did the same thing. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> Here I was with like my hair growing back. I needed to protect it. And I found myself always putting like a scarf on before putting the hoodie on. One day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make satin line hoodies. When you were at Princeton, what were you studying? Yeah, it's crazy because my degree is in ecological biology. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> <My degree>. Naturally. <laughs> With a certificate in global health. So I actually did get, get into the Columbia Millman School of Public Health. Good for you. But I ended up not going. Can you tell me, like, where are you manufacturing these and how much do they sell for? So we are manufacturing in China. The ones that you have right now are our thick hoodies. Those cost $13.75 to make and $16.75 landed, and we sell it for $80. Wow, that's a great margin. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. I have almost 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Good for wow. you. Thank you, and on YouTube, I do hair. I basically help black women embrace their natural hair. And it was mainly because I wanted to document my own journey Okay. But it became bigger than that because people were coming saying, you're inspiring me, you're motivating me to take care of my hair. I'm sorry. Tell us why he's sad. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm crying because it wasn't the original plan and I got a lot of flack for, from it, from my family. <laughs> So, you know, I have immigrant parents. We're from Ghana, West Africa. And I was raised by my grandmother in Ghana. And at a young age, I've always loved helping people. I wanted to do that with global health. But when I chopped off all of my hair and began my hair care journey, I, j I was just so passionate about making hair care more inclusive for others. But the thing is, like, my mom looks at my accomplishments now, and she's like, wow, I'm so glad that you actually... So you've made peace with them. Yeah, she's happy. She's so Which happy. Which I'm guessing means you have good sales. 
Mr. <laughs> Wonderful, I know you like sales. I do. I was tell wondering us. if you're going to tell us about that. Tell us. <laughs> right. So, like I said, I, I started this company last year with $500. $500 that I only put into marketing. And um, we made $246,000. Wow. Wow, okay. And this year, <laughs> we are at $355,000. Wow. Really? What's your customer acquisition cost? It's zero. Zero. <laughs> so you're doing you're doing three over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars of sales this year so far with zero cost of yeah, zero acquisition. I'm not cost. spending any money on digital. Well, she's I got a two hundred thousand followers. That's our community. It's not even the YouTube channel. We're we're always constantly going viral on Instagram and TikTok. Like, are you selling out of these hoodies? Yes, and that's my biggest problem, and that's also why I'm here. Like, I want to make the deal so that I can buy more and stop being on pre-order. So, oh, the, you're on pre-order. Yeah, at the, the thing with pre-order is that it's, it takes four to six weeks. So you're making customers wait four to six weeks. Yes, when we sell out, I have to put the products on pre-order, or else when you come to the site, you can't buy anything. So then I'm not making money. How much money do you have in the bank right now? I have 150,000. And how much do you have in inventory? Oof. <laughs> In inventory, in inventory, I got like 500 or less. Look, I'm very impressed with what you've done. There's no question about it. But when I invest in an entrepreneur, I want to use my following, five, six million followers and different platforms to help reduce their customer acquisition cost. The only product category that I've ever had a problem with, I've been successful in everything except hair care products. And I can't understand why. It just doesn't make <laughs> sense to me. So, I'm out. Thank you, Mr. Wonderful. You are a uh, poetry in motion, uh, a chaotic poetry in motion, I see. In your presentation of your facts, as well as, I even think in your thinking, which doesn't mean to say you aren't brilliant. I think you're brilliant, no doubt. You are, what I see often in business, uh, super creative. The downside to super creatives is they have an idea a minute, and then they act on it. And I don't think you need a shark partner, because you'd be too much to handle. I spend all day long controlling you, okay? <laughs> you need a working partner, truly. And you need someone who's exactly opposite. Someone who knows numbers, someone who loves to live off to-do list, okay? I have to say, I'm going to go out sadly, but I think you have enormous potential. Thank yeah, you. Uh, Philomena, I, I agree with Barbara. I always partnered with people who were anal, and I gave up big chunks of my business because I'm a ready, fire, aim person. And you seem to be a ready, fire, aim mm, person as yes, well. True. And you need somebody who is like, no, no you got to stay work. within the baseline. I can change. I'm here for it to no, change. No, you can't, and that's not, I'm not asking you to change. I don't want you to change. You're amazing the way you are. But recognize one of the greatest skills an entrepreneur can have is knowing what they can't do. And you need somebody there full time that lives it as much as you do. And that can't be me, so for those reasons, I'm out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You still have two sharks left. You do have yes, two sharks do. left. But I think the valuation is an issue, and I think you've got a lot of kinks to try and figure out with this so business. I'm here to make a deal, so... Listen, I'm here to make a deal, too. <laughs> I think what's really interesting, and just understanding the landscape a bit more at the moment yeah. in retail, is that all retailers are looking for black female founders. And so I actually think that this product, speaking to the audience that it does, looking as diverse and inclusive as it really is, has a huge window of opportunity. I think that Laurie and I would be amazing sharks for you with all of Laurie's background in manufacturing, with what I do with both Good American and Skims, like really understanding the apparel landscape. So I'd like to make you an offer. Okay. And it is us together. 30% of your business for the 200,000 that you're asking for. Would y'all do 20? No. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a fair offer, and let me tell you why. You don't know what you don't know right now, right? You're just at the beginning. You are actually are gonna need a lot of help. You're spending no money in marketing, and all of those things are gonna come. We can accelerate this business. And that's your last? Y'all can't even do 25? Here's the thing, you're giving away something, absolutely, but think about what you get in return. You know, I always say I make millionaires, that's what I do. And with a partner like Emma, hey, come on. <laughs> Why are you emotional? Tell me. I'm crying 
because I'm so happy. <laughs> it's happy tears because I'm just like, wow, y'all, y'all want to make a deal with me. Lori and Emma. Welcome to the kinfolk. <laughs> Tears of joy. <laughs> Congratulations, Philomena. Well done. Still in the tank. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> we made it to Shark Tank and we made a deal with Lori and Emma. <laughs> this is to tell you to follow your dreams. Follow your passion. If you have a passion, go for it. Don't let anybody stop you.